Distortionary taxes raise prices. Distortionary subsidies are just negative taxes. They lower prices. So if we subsidize a good, we're making it less expensive. So here we're starting with an undistorted price that gives us the original undistorted budget between X1 and the composite good of dollars of other consumption. And then we subsidize the good X1, we lower its price, so the price becomes P1 minus that per unit subsidy. To figure out the deadweight loss from a subsidy, we take the same steps we do to figure out the deadweight loss from a tax. First, we ask, well, how much did we spend under the subsidy? Then we ask, how much could we have spent and made you just as well off without distorting prices? And we compare those two to determine the deadweight loss. So here we'd have to figure out where does the consumer actually end up consuming after the subsidy? Because there's no way to figure out how much the subsidy is going to cost the government without knowing how much of the subsidized good the consumer is going to buy after the subsidy. So the consumer is going to optimize the, at some bundle A. And we can figure out the amount that the government had to pay in a total subsidy the same way we figured out the amount of tax revenue the government collects. So after the subsidy, the consumer buys this much in the good X1. That allows the consumer to buy this much in other goods. If the consumer hadn't received the subsidy and had to pay full price, she would only have been able to consume this much in other goods. So the difference is how much the government must have paid to make up that difference. So that's a big capital S. That's the total subsidy payment the government made. Now we can ask the question, well, how much could the government have spent without distorting the prices and made this consumer just as happy. We would take the original undistorted budget and shift it out parallel. We're just giving cash to the consumer now. And as we're giving cash to the consumer, eventually we reach that consumer's after subsidy indifference curve, and we'd end up at some point B. The vertical difference between the green and the blue line is measured in dollars, and it's the amount of cash we gave the consumer to make her just as happy as she would be under the distortionary subsidy when she ends up at bundle A. So that difference can be measured anywhere, including here. So it would be the difference between here and here. So that difference would be the lump sum subsidy we could have given. In other words, we could have given less cash and made this consumer just as happy as we did with a distortionary subsidy when we paid this much. So the difference between those two is the deadweight loss from the subsidy. So the deadweight loss is the difference between what we actually spent to make the consumer this well off and what we could have spent if we hadn't distorted prices. And again, you see that deadweight loss emerging from a pure substitution effect. So in our marginal values to pay picture, we can show those same areas just as we did with taxes. We can bring down the point A. The point A happens at the lower prices that include the subsidy. So they happen at prices where we subtract that per unit subsidy. So that's our point A. The point B happens on a steeper budget, the undistorted prices, which are higher in the case of a subsidy. When we connect those, we get a marginal willingness to pay curve. We get a curve derived from tangencies from a single indifference curve, so that's the marginal willingness to pay curve that corresponds to this utility level A. So now we can do exactly the same thing as we did with taxes. We can figure out the consumer surplus without the subsidy, without the distortionary subsidy, but with the lump sum subsidy, where we leave the consumer with the high price. 
in this case, the consumer surplus would be everything above that price up to the marginal willingness to pay curve, which is area A. Then we can figure out the consumer surplus with the distortionary subsidy. So with S. Everything above the price up to the marginal willingness to pay curve. So that's area A, B, and C. A plus B plus C. But wait a second. How is it that this consumer can have more consumer surplus at point A than at point B when she's equally happy at A and B? She's on the same indifference curve. Well, something must have happened at point B that compensated for the fact that she's losing the consumer surplus of B plus C. Well, what did she get at B? She got a lump sum payment. She got cash. So the amount of cash she must have gotten, so this implies that the amount of lump sum cash she must have gotten is equal to the area B plus C. That's the only way she could be equally happy at points A and B, despite the fact that she has more consumer surplus at, a, at, at point A. So the lump sum cash subsidy, that distance is equal to the area B plus C. How much did the government actually have to pay in a subsidy when it used the distortionary subsidy? Well, it had to pay this difference in price per unit that's consumed under the subsidy. And the consumer is consuming all the way up to point A under the subsidy, under the lower prices. So we have to multiply this distance times this distance. So we get a box here. that includes yet another area, this little area D. So the total subsidy, capital S, this distance here, is equal to that rectangle, B plus C plus D. Well, the deadweight loss is defined as S minus L. So if we subtract B plus C from B plus C plus D, we get area D. This area D becomes the deadweight loss from the distortionary subsidy. And just as with distortionary taxes, that deadweight loss is entirely due to a substitution effect. So it should go away if we remove the substitution effect. So let's do that. We do that by making the goods perfect complements. Remove all degrees of substitutability. And we just replicate the picture. We have an initial budget that's without distortion, so the original price. Then we have the budget with the subsidy, the lower price. We find the optimal point on that budget, only now we do it with an L-shaped indifference curve for perfect complements. We get our point A. The amount the government has to pay is the difference between the other consumption that consumers could do with the distortionary subsidy and the amount that they could have done consuming the same amount but without receiving a subsidy. So this difference becomes capital S. And then when we give cash, we say, well, how much could we have shifted that undistorted budget out parallel to reach this indifference curve? And the earliest point where we'll reach this is when it goes straight through point A. So that vertical distance between the green and the blue is the amount of lump sum subsidy we could have given and made the consumer just as happy. Only now A is equal to B. And the lump sum subsidy, that distance, is exactly equal to S. Since the deadweight loss is S minus L, there is no deadweight loss. We've taken away the substitute substitutability, so we've taken away the substitution effect, and the deadweight loss goes away, just as in the case of distortionary taxes. And then, of course, we could show the same thing on the lower picture by deriving the marginal willingness to pay curve. So we have to bring down point A, Point A happens at the lower prices, at the prices with the distortionary subsidy. 
then we bring down point B. Point B has the same quantity of x1, but at the higher prices, where we've given cash instead, but we didn't change the prices. So now we have consumer surplus at the higher price as this area up here, consumer surplus at the lower price as this area plus this area. We can't be happier at point A than we did were at point B. So you must have gotten something at point B to compensate for the fact that you don't get this additional consumer surplus and what you got was cash. We shifted that budget out. The amount of cash you must have gotten is exactly equal to this area. So we have areas A and B. The amount of lump sum cash we gave you to get you to point B is just equal to area B. But that's also equal to the subsidy payment the government made. The per unit subsidy is the difference in prices. You buy this many units. So this rectangle now becomes the total subsidy payment. So deadweight loss is equal to S minus L, which is now zero. There is no little rectangle that's hiding somewhere here. It's gone away because we've removed the substitution effect. We've moved, removed the source of the deadweight loss.